part of a locking mechanism or something that releases it. Because the wood on these old buildings didn't get treated, I think it be seen, but I don't think it will. Pile of black cats. Again, my guess is that we'll see some occasional quaint pieces of reproduction in style of roof maybe, and maybe even in, in shutters and illusions here on, of aluminum in uh, those door, slatted doorways. But my guess is that long ago this was converted from the old tattered neighborhood or old. At least the sign looks old. Those boughs certainly look like they're look of corrugated metal of the adjoining building. We get to look through this doorway of some old building or a building into a garden in the back. And this may be what is behind a lot of these buildings is a pleasant backyard. It's interesting that you should find this here. Different people walking up and down here so Maybe I should too. It's kind of a screen facsimile. And an example of a residence and business combination on this street. Now here's where you get to use your imagination. There's still the remnants of old buildings here, I think. Some old rocks there. Some rocks that either were barriers to the corner or were uh, important symbolic stones. But this, at some point in time, would have been an intersection of importance. Look at it, that side of the building is relatively new wood, so maybe what they've done is simply restored that wall and left the rest of it to be a, what we hope it is. Even those are shops on occasion. May well be the maintained remnants of older houses or simply uh, reconstituted in that format. There's nothing strange about finding so little in Japan that's original like this, given that if you were in New York, you'd be unlikely to find any. No, I'm not going to say door, but maybe not. It may be that this is a day for some reason, I think it's Tuesday or Wednesday, that shops traditionally close. Entry gate leading into... So this is the reason you traipse into little neighborhoods like this that you've read about in the hopes that you'll discover some little jewel of the past. I had a young man stopped and chatted with me a bit in English. Notice what I guess is the mail slop and notice how short this door is. I have to stoop down to get in. Now this shrine is interesting because it's composed of all these little carvings or littler carvings. I wonder if it's an amalgamation of carvings from different sites or different eras, whatever. Imagine if you knew this history. My guess is from the way this design is it once functioned as a scary icon. And here a little pond. I wonder what those strings are for. Do they keep birds from f flying down in there? There's some big, robust flowers. The leaves and branches almost don't look substantial enough to hold these. Some of what we're looking at apparently goes back to the 8th century, or 9th century, I mean, the 800s. The elaborate incense burning statue. A stupa, the top almost looking like an electrical line insulator. Imagine how long that bell is here, not to mention that bell pounder thingy. This is an impressive piece. I don't know what its function would be. What is this? Devil of a character's tail comes out through there. And his body comes out and a couple legs there. 
long, sinuous dragon. Probably some from pieces from an older structure here. You can just imagine the circumstances under which the shrine sold off its land for that building. Built right up next to it. And these stones, notice that they've been worked there. That curve um, outlining some kind of a building that had a, a portico to it. Um, there's a stone there. So this might have been a walkway, a cloister. Someone lives here to maintain it. I think there's a bathroom there I can use too. Could and could these actually be burial stone? This is interesting for two reasons. Number one, the gold, a little bit of an extravagance. Uh, those lovely lines we've seen on some of the Japanese temples. And what's the point of those two sticks in that pattern? Certainly a different kind of a shrine, whatever it is. And those two pieces of wood certainly have some significance. These are either wells. No, I think they must be wells. There's two on this property, right next to this uh, purification trough, or double trough, really. Again, a nice, tranquil setting. This shrine undergoing some restoration. Probably a room laid out for a Japanese type little bank. Parts of these buildings certainly look old. They just may be wise entrepreneurs leaving them that way. Not sure if I videoed this flower before. Here you can see one of these benches in the down position. Great for sitting. Not to mention putting your wares on. Pretty downspout, probably not very old, but looks old since the water's dripping down it and oxidizing what probably is copper. Certainly traditional looking photograph or cabinets. Little sewing machine, sad iron. Oh, I bet that's for holding cord and unraveling it. <clears throat> I think this had been a sign, perhaps. It looks like an interesting sign. I don't know that any of these buildings are terribly old, but they certainly look old compared to the blah, boring architecture of the rest of Japan because you don't see anything interesting in Japan occasionally a commercial building I'm guessing this is an antique shop magnificent carvings eh? Now here are wandering along this little street with tight little corners, but you can imagine that there was a time when the old street was here that there would be very curious reasons looking back historically why this took its twists and turns because one guy decided to build a building a certain way and another guy a different way, a little land dispute, and then you get to this intersection here. Moving something old and putting in something new. This is the change that has taken care of this entire new, new temple. Or shrine, rather. But it may have tremendous historical precedence.
coffee making machine or grinding machine or Yamamato, Yamato Cha, Yamato Tea. Interesting, you wonder what its purpose originally was. Intersection. Here, a little, whatever you want to call it, shrine. Um, right in this drainage area here. And next to it, what looks like a very large shrine and big water lake or whatever. Maybe I can find out where I am. So I've managed to wander from here all around through here and I'm now up at this point right there. I'll just pan around. Up there I think is the three-story pagoda. And then somewhere up in there is the Kofukuji Kokuha Kan Museum. And there should also be a five-story pagoda. That may be it. And then the National Museum is over there somewhere. There are these disrespectful pigeons stand on top of the turtles. I guess they're all buddies. Turtles want to get fed all right along with the ducks and the fish. Curious why this one has that reddish color to it. It's the most turtles I've seen since some, I think, a Buddhist temple in China. Lesson in purification. <laughs> Trying to get it on the statue, that's where it's supposed to be. Again, the epitome of restraint. Almost boring. This building looking new or recently refurbished. You want to go up on top and look at what's up there. that do not enter so very heavily controlled area like they get a lot of people in here they have to regulate it part of a pilgrimage which is why that lady's getting her book stamped and he's writing something on it. Pilgrimage to a number of temples. Interesting the number of Jap over oh, Japanese women I see that look so racked over like they had some disease that's peculiar to Japanese women. Glad to see that one older Japanese couple rebelled against this prohibition against taking pictures even just from inside those fenced areas. I'm guessing that the purpose of this structure is to protect a temple in there that they're completely redoing 
restoring or whatever, you can see large posts right above this fence line. If I can get the camera in there. So the gray area is apparently the building, which is called the Chuman, and the Cairo restoration is under restoration. And then this yellow portion is probably this part that's in front of us that wraps around and see all of the um, bases for the posts that are indicated there and it probably has a roof on it. Love the smell of this incense. Notice those little features that look like hanging bells or something up there. We'll go take a look at them. Pretty little bell tower, if you will. And here's the five story pagoda. It certainly is impressive with its size and its design, but I think it has to be part of your culture in order to be really awed by it, because I am not. What I have to applaud is the magnitude of the construction and its apparent complexity out of wood. I wonder if these are actually wind chimes. It's interesting to watch the people sometimes when they're feeding the deer, they're afraid of the deer, so they're very tentative in offering it food. Um, and it should be the reverse. The deer are totally nonplussed. This guy here thinking he's got a leg up, excuse the pun, by being up high enough that people can see him and he doesn't have to do a lot of reaching to get at the food. This the Tokando Hall. Probably a meeting place for the Daimo and his cohorts route that I'm on now should be right where you see the Red Tory and the, the Nara National Museum sign. I think I'm above the word Nara. So we're moving towards that area and then once we're there we can hang a right, go south and hit these other little lake areas. This is the Koko Kofu Zhu. This is the Kofukuji Temple Complex offices. It's a pretty little park, but it looks like it may be closed off to the public. What my salary is right now is just about like the bare minimum.